Well, it might seem that almost everywhere you go these days, people are talking about politics. At least it's definitely that way for us. We do it all the time. But a new NBC News poll reveals interest in the upcoming presidential election has actually dipped to its lowest level in nearly two decades. I want to bring on our political panel for this one, Democrat strategist David Carlucci joining us today. We appreciate that. Republican strategist Eric Mitchell joining us as well. Gentlemen, thank you for that. Um, so let's dive into the poll, and then I'll go over to uh, David, if I can. Uh, so here it is on your screen in terms of interest, election interest here. The poll's showing 64% of voters in this survey having a high level of interest in November's election. The number showing a decline in those with high levels of interest compared to previous presidential elections. So you can see on your screen it was 77% in 2020. Uh, obviously the highest turnout that we've seen there as reported by the states. And then in 2016, 69%, and it goes on. The last biggest one, Obama, 74%. Uh, what's happening here? 64%, the lowest level thus far in the past few years. Uh, I'll go to David on that. Yeah, I think people are just tuning it out. Um, you know, I saw this comic where it talked about the, sun, the eclipse sunglasses we all had. You know, and you could see the sun with it. And some were talking about using it for the 2024 presidential election, you know, just to see nothing, to blur it out. I mean, we on this show, we all love this stuff, right? We, we live, we breathe politics, but a, a lot of Americans don't. And they'll take a little bit of it. But now when you get into this rematch, it's almost like Groundhog Day with, with Biden and Trump. And I can see that a lot of people, you know, they're just tuning it out. They say, you know, they, they're not really tuned in. And what I think this does is it bodes well for for President Biden. Why do I say that? Because a lot of this polling, you know, especially with the young voters, uh, we've all been scratching our head to say, you know, why is Biden not doing that well with younger voters? And I think it's because people are tuning it out. And as we get closer to the election and it becomes more of this binary choice, uh, young voters particularly will will tend to go back to the Democratic Party. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, we see the protests showing up on all these college campuses. They seem like a, a lot of young people and they don't seem too satisfied with how President Biden is leading when it comes to his support for Israel. Um, but, Eric, when you think about this 2024 election, is it just 2020, you know, redone or is there something more that you're looking for this time around that voters should be taking note of or perhaps being interested in? I think we, 2020 was a cakewalk and that's coming off the vaccine stuff. 2024, it's just a dumpster fire. Our country is more divided than ever. You bring up the Ivy League schools, these privileged Ivy League kids protesting, chanting death to America, burning our flag. There's a lot broken. There's a lot more writing on this country than mean tweets, which was what 2020 was. This is a country divided between the Biden team and the Trump team. And Americans are just sick of it. And when we talk about these polls, let's remember, ever since Trump left and flew off into the, into the sunset, it's been nonstop fear of Donald Trump for four years. People are sick and tired of hearing about this election because it feels like we haven't had a break from talking about it, which is great for all of us. But the rest of America is like, can't we talk about other things? Because there are other things. The border, everywhere, people waving Ukrainian flags on our congressional floor. There are bigger topics to talk about, but this is what we've been focused on because the left just loves to obsess over it. And we need to really get our country back together again or it's going to continue this crack. And that's why I think people are going to step up and vote this year because they're sick and tired of what Biden has done in the last three and a half years, which was completely destroy this great nation. Uh, David, back to you on this, too. I wanted to bring Congress, if we can, into the conversation as well. We've seen this back and forth of the Re Republican Party barely holding on to majority, bleeding Republicans uh, in, in, in terms of holding the majority, coming out with now just a, a, a one-vote majority uh, in the House. And, and this could get even worse. You've seen the potential to motion to vacate the, the speakership. We've seen this play out over and over and over, difficulty in getting things passed. Have, do you believe maybe some of these voters, the interest has went down because of what they see on the on the House floor or specifically in, in Congress? David? Yeah, I think so. I think as we've seen, historians point to the fact that this Congress has been the least productive Congress uh, possibly ever, which is pretty amazing and remarkable to think about. Um, but I think what we see there in Congress, particularly, you have a few um, extreme members that are able to steer the ship. 
And this might be red meat for the, the GOP primary voters, but it's going to be lima beans come the general election for moderates. And I think those moderates or those people that are in marginal districts, those representatives, are in serious trouble, right? Obviously, the presidential election, you know, that will lift uh, the boats in terms of turnout. Um, but you're going to have more people that are not as engaged, uh, that will come in and vote at the last minute. And I think they're going to be very upset with what's coming out of Congress. And this will be a big problem for the GOP going into November. I think regardless of the presidential election, I think the way that Congress has behaved mm. will be very dangerous uh, for Republicans. And I think that will mean that Democrats will retake the gavel and the speakership come 2025. All right. We've got just about 30 seconds left in the segment. Uh, Eric, we'll give you the final word. Well, I, I disagree with my friend there. Uh, I, I think we I mean, yes, we actually know who our congressional leaders are. I think we've known more about them ever than these last four years and know them by name and face. But I definitely think this is waking the country up because we're being loud and we're telling people, hey, they're sleeping at the wheel and all of our taxpayer money's going away. And I think people are seeing that when they go to the polls in November, they're going to remember going, where's this money tree that's going to affect not just our generation, but generations to come? Ninety six billion dollars. How are we going to repay that? That's not something that you pay back slowly. That's going to take a long time. Generations. And I think voters will remember that in November. All right, we'll leave it there. Political panel, thank you so much. David Carlucci, Eric Mitchell, we appreciate the time. Thank Good you. to be with you. Thanks.